Okay, so here's how we're gonna play this. As it turns out, Transom here, and Cuthbert, I thought they were the same army. They look exactly the same as you can see from the unit composition, but actually these are two entirely separate armies. Cuthbert has a pack of archers, lots of pikemen, a few swordsmen, and a few griffins. And it's actually Sanya who has the rest of these units in the castle there. So if we attack Cuthbert, we should be okay. But I don't think we have quite enough units to then go and take on the second army of the Tam player. I think if we were playing a human player here, that could be it. We could actually lose here because what they would do is combine both of these armies into one big army. Put them uh, on the stronger of the two he heroes and then uh, chase Straker down and probably beat him. But because we're playing the AI, I think we should actually be able to potentially come out of this situation with the upper hand. We definitely can't deal the death blow to the Tam player right now. Uh, I'd say, if anything, we are the one at a disadvantage. But I think what we might be able to do is attack Cuthbert and take him out. And come out of that fight better. And then run away. And what I'm hoping is that they won't chase me down with Sanya. And if that happens, it's then going to be a kind of cat and mouse thing. I'm going to be back at my base uh, playing defensively for a little while, trying to kind of build myself up. And I do have uh, a visual on the Tan player, so I will be able to watch him and see what he's doing. And then I think it's just going to be a case of picking the right moment to strike. So, <laughs> here we go. I hope it goes well. Alright, so... He attempts to cast a spell on the skeletons there, but it fails thanks to our resistance skill, which is nice. Um, this could be interesting. What I'm thinking is, we do currently have the ability to cast a spell, and haste is a decent option. What haste would do is increase the zombie's speed from 5 to 8, which would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that would actually be enough speed increase for us to get the whole way across the field to the archers in the space of effectively one turn. What I'm not entirely sure of is whether that's the right decision to go for when we could go for Magic Arrow twice instead because we only have 10 spell points and we have poten the potential to use Magic Arrow twice in two different rounds or the potential to just use haste and then not have enough spell points for anything else. I'm really not sure what the better option is. What I am going to do for now is just wait with everyone and see what this guy wants to do. As I lose two skeletons to the archers there. I think I am going to go for haste because if I was going to go for magic arrow I would have done that straight away on the archers. Just so that my skeletons wouldn't take quite so much damage there. But I think it's okay for now. I'm just going to keep everyone waiting. See what this guy does as it looks like that's going to be it. So what I will do is use haste on the zombies. Uh, I want to keep these guys out of range of these swordsmen, so I'm going to move them up to there. And these guys, I'm just going to move them up in general. Uh, these guys are not really too important. I can't see these guys having too much of an impact on the combat. I'm not entirely sure how best to use those. But if I can keep everyone out of the range of the swordsmen there, I should at least be in an okay position going into the second round, I believe. Right, I think that's okay. Alright, so the griffins come forward, but we do get to move our skeletons now. I believe they'll be the fastest units on the field, which, yeah, I'm pretty sure they are. So we're going to move all the way to there. And then they get to go again straight away, because it's the next round, and they're the fastest creature on the field. So go all the way to the archers, hopefully take them out in one shot. Not quite, actually. As uh, this time he does manage to get through to the skeletons. The griffins take out the, uh, the skeleton, the one lone skeleton there. Isn't too bad. I'm going to use the vampires on the griffins here. Alright, so they're going, focusing down the zombies. Um, I'm going to wait with these because they can't do anything yet. Or they could probably actually finish off the griffins. But I might use my skeletons for that instead, I think. And yeah, I've got no spell points to do anything else. So, uh, taking some damage from the archers there, but it's not too bad. We're losing quite a few zombies, not ideal. But uh, I am keeping my skeletons safe for now, which is nice. Let's see what these guys want to do. Alright, so I can move slightly further forward. I'm not 
I'm starting to think it might be better just to... Actually, what I will do is uh, keep these guys relatively safe by taking out the griffin. And then move these guys forward. Hopefully bait the swordsman into coming forward. And wasting a turn. And uh, I'm going to keep the whites safely behind the front line there. Alright, looks like he's not coming forward at all. Um, Alright, so my zombies are taking a beating, which isn't nice. If I go... Slightly out of these guys' range. Five, six range, six as well. No, I'm gonna have to go forward with them. And... Okay, so I'll do 50 to 75 damage, which will be enough to kill off five... to seven pikemen. Definitely kill the swordsmen. And definitely kill off the archers. But I don't want my zombies to take unnecessary damage, ideally. So I'm just going to kill the swordsmen for now. As uh, they do take some nasty damage from the pikemen there. Um, just going to wait with these guys, keep them out of harm's way for a bit. Move these skeletons forward, hopefully bait someone to attack them. First aid tent brings a little bit of- oh, one point of damage. That is the worst first aid turn. <laughs> one health point, that's really weak. Um, Alright, the whites can go slightly further forward now. These guys, because we don't have to worry about retaliation, we'll go straight for the stronger unit. Archers go for the, uh, for the skeletons, which is fine. I'm just going to take them out now. Ah, they're really focusing down the zombies. Kind of unfortunate, but I'm pretty sure we are going to come out of this fight in the better situation overall. Let's hit that. Okay, so I need to try and finish these off before they can do too much more damage. As uh, they take out one skeleton, and that's it. We lost 19 skeletons and 9 zombies. And we took out two griffins, four swordsmen, and uh, ten archers and twenty pikemen. I think that is better overall. That's not so bad. Straker has gained a level, a level three death knight. Spell power plus one. That would have been useful last turn, but never mind. Uh, expert resistance or basic archery. I do like the archery skill. I really do. However, Necropolis only gets the one ranged unit, which is the Lich, and they are a decent ranged unit because they can hit more than one unit in one turn. But I think I don't really want to be introducing a new skill right now. I actually want to get resistance in the hopes that next turn I'll have a chance to upgrade my necromancy skill. Because the necromancy skill is just so incredibly useful, borderline overpowered, most would say. And uh, yeah, my plan is to get the hell out of here. Because I don't think I can take that fight. I will split up my army just in case I do get chased down. Keep everyone together, I guess. Alright, now hopefully this will work out okay. I, I don't know how this will go. If I get chased down and killed, I might be able to get away with playing defensive even after that. Um, if that doesn't work, I might have to reload and rethink this whole plan and just move straight back instead of taking on uh, Cuthbert. But it was good to take Cuthbert out of the game. That has severely weakened Tan. The main thing I'm worried about is that until one of us takes out the other one, we're kind of both just screwing each other over and allowing the other players in the game to get further and further ahead, probably. That's probably what's happening. So one of us is going to have to take the other one out and then take advantage of the fact that they will then have two bases instead of one. But until that happens, I think we're both going to be kind of screwing ourselves over with this one. Alright, so I'm going to get Isra over to safety. I think I'm going to leave him near the Mystical Garden so that I can get some uh, coins straight away with next week. And uh, at the base, I'm thinking... I'm thinking it might be a better idea to not buy anything, because I think the City Hall, particularly since we can't really expand out at the moment, I think buying the City Hall is going to be pretty important. But there is going to be the difficult issue next turn of whether to buy the Citadel, because the Citadel adds a 50% increase to base creature growth, which is absolutely huge, it also makes it way easier to defend if I do get attacked. But if I do buy it, I'm going to be really poor for absolutely ages. If I don't buy it, and I focus on saving up for the City Hall, I might find myself with a lot of money, but not enough creatures to actually take on the Tam player. So, uh, it's a bit of a conundrum. I'm leaning towards... I think I'm leaning towards saving up for the City Hall. For now, at least. But I'm just gonna end my turn. As, uh, they stay in the base. Perfect. 
Well, as long as they keep doing that, we could potentially uh, grow an advantage. The problem is, next turn, they will get to refresh this batch of units entirely. And then it's up to me to do the same thing over at my base. And just hope that that leaves me stronger of the two of us. Bit difficult because I can't afford to buy my creatures at the start of next turn unless I buy myself a Town Hall, which is going to require at least two more turns of waiting. And generally speaking, you don't want to play defensive in this game because uh, you're, you're kind of foregoing opportunities to take advantage of what's on the map. But I think in this situation, <laughs> I need to play it relatively safe. I, I can't take that on, not yet. Possibly in future. There is some cool stuff around his base. A uh, horde of zombies, if they could join me, that would be wonderful, but I'm pretty sure they won't. Uh, a horde of goblins would be nice if we can get that necromancy skill built up a little bit more. Currently, we only get 10% of the dead creatures back as skeletons. But that number can get absolutely ridiculous in the late game. Um, yeah, I think we've done all we can this turn. Actually, what I might do is send Isra up to the Medusa stores. Just to see what it's guarded by. Lots of Medusas. So that's uh, that's a pack of Medusas, that's lots of Medusas. So that would be easier to kill, but I don't know what that leads to. If that happens to lead to a third player, then I'm going to be right in the middle of a whole heap of shit. So, uh, I'm not entirely sure whether to focus on kind of using my army to expand my economy and uh, explore the area a little bit more, or just focus entirely on this uh, this kind of war that I have going on with Tan. That's gonna have to... something's gonna have to happen with that pretty soon, I'm pretty sure. Alright, so this turn I have the choice. Do I want to build the Citadel, or do I want to sit back and save my money for the City Hall? I can't... I can't resist the Citadel. It's just such a useful building, getting an extra two vampires a week, three whites, four zombies, and six skeletons in exchange for 2,500 gold that I really badly needed. But I couldn't resist. <laughs> I didn't actually think I was going to do that, but I, I, just, I swear I just saw... No. I definitely saw something in the base of town there, but they didn't actually move out. I guess they're staying in for one more turn. Let's see what they can gather up. I uh, can't actually make it to the Mystical Garden this turn, that's really unfortunate, but I think what I will do is just park Straker in the base for this one turn at least. And tough decision whether to build up an army or keep trying to save up. Lots of Medusas. Those are level 4 creatures. And similar to the Greater Basilisks, which was an absolutely horrible fight, they can turn you to stone if you fight them close up. And you have to fight them close up because they're ranged units, so if you don't go over to them, they're going to chew you up. So... It's a bit of a gamble, but uh, it seems that fighting Medusas is really unavoidable for some reason. We've got Medusa Queens right there, we've got Medusa Stores up there, and we've got uh, lots of Medusas there. Imp Cash would normally be quite easy to take on, but because it's guarded by lots of Diamond Golems who are guarding the Necklace of Ocean Guidance, which I'm pretty sure is literally useless on this map, uh, <laughs> can't actually go for that either. Lots of Silver Pegasite, I don't know what that's guarding. But I'm pretty sure there'll be something else on the other side of it too, so... For now I think I'm just going to... Wait this one out. As long as Tan isn't doing anything then we're in the same situation. He's coming for me... With... Not much. What's he left behind? He's left nothing behind. And his army is relatively small, so this, uh, this opportunity to take him on might have come a little bit sooner than I expected. 3,000 gold? I could keep saving that up for a Town Hall, but I honestly just want to try and push on Tan here. So I need to decide which creatures do I want the most. I think 12 zombies on account of the fact that we are the zombie specialists, so we want to have a nice zombie army. Uh, vampires I think are going to be the next priority, and I can only buy 4 of those, but that's nice. And then I've got 90 gold left. I think what I will do is trade every little scrap of spare resources I have just try and get as big of an army as possible. And I might actually be able to beat the Tan player, unless they run home, which they very easily might. But I feel reasonably confident about this. So let's get some more stuff, let's get the two vampires first. And then we've only got 145 left, so let's see what else we can sell. I think we'll sell off 
most of that. 295 to go, we'll get some skeletons, or possibly... We'll get one white, and one skeleton. Alright, so looking at this, we do have our full batch of spell points back, along with an extra spell power compared to the last fight we were in. Sanya has lots of pikemen, which is difficult, but I have lots of zombies and lots of skeletons. There's a pack of archers, which could be really awkward. Several swordsmen, who should be roughly on a par with the several vampires I have. And lots of griffins, which I don't really have anything... to match. To be honest, I think I could potentially win that fight, but it could be really costly. I could wait for one more turn, but then he might go back to Transom and get even more units. I'm gonna have to make my move, I think. What I will do is I'll send Straker towards Sanya. If this fails, then I might have to reload the game, but I, I feel relatively confident that we can push Sanya back to her base, this one turn at least. Yeah, let's go for that. And we'll move Isra back to the base so that Isra can pass some units over to Straker the next turn. And I think that's all we can do today. Definitely can't build anything today because we have absolutely no money left, so we'll end the turn there. As yep, Sanya is going back, but actually not to the base. That seems like a massive blunder. What's... oh. I can't quite make it there in one turn, but... That's interesting. I... I can't stop her. I'm pretty sure I can't stop her from going back to the base. She can just go straight around me and go straight back into that base. She's taken some resources from the windmill. She's also taken out the horde of goblins, which is unfortunate because I could have harvested harvested some skeletons off those, which would have been nice. Um, back up to a thousand gold. I think I will buy some more units. Skeletons, buy 17 skeletons or 5 whites. I think 5 whites is going to be slightly better. We'll carry those over. Hand them to Straker, who are now, I'm pretty confident, should be able to take on Sanya without too much trouble. But she is just going to run straight past us. So I need to decide what can I do around Sanya's base that's going to cripple her while not leaving myself in any real danger. This could be difficult. There's uh, a prison there which gives you a free hero, but it's guarded by Storm Elementals, which are pretty strong units, and I would not want to fight them. Horde of Zombies I can't really fight. Uh, I could go for the Redwood Observatory, which will reveal the whole surrounding area. And I've got some free spells potentially. Can't get that one because that's a level 3 spell and I don't have the Wisdom skill, so I can only learn up to level 2 spells. Shrine of Magic Incantation should be, I believe, a level 1 spell. I think the best thing to do is just going to be to hang around and at least scare this person. Yeah, let's do that. Still can't see any more for now. So we'll in turn see what she does. She goes back into the base, but has she recruited anything? It looks like she hasn't. It really looks like she hasn't. That is very interesting. I might actually be able to win the fight. And that would be huge. I will go get a new spell, just in case it's something really useful. Magic arrow, we already had that. Hmm, I might actually go for this. It's gonna be... Hmm. I'll go for it, and if it doesn't work out, I'll have to retry. Alright, so 26 archers, holy crap, that is scary. 19 griffins, that... Oh god, this is... <laughs> This is a strong army, this is very strong. What's the hero like? 30 spell points, holy crap, that's a lot. Oh man, I might not be able to do this. But no defences, apart from the walls, there aren't, any, there aren't any defences here, so that's good. I think for now I'm just going to go for Magic Arrow on the archers, take some of them out so they can't do quite as much harm. And just wait with the rest of my units. So the archers shoot the vampires, not doing quite enough damage to take one out, but still a pretty scary amount. Ah, resistance resists a spell. She's down five spell points, which suggests that spell would have been magic arrow. It's nice to have blocked that. 
Resistance is actually coming in really handy in this game so far. I do have three attack and two defense, which should mean that my units have a slightly better advantage when it comes to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. I just need to get through these walls first, which could be really difficult. Ah, first aid tent heals 16 points of damage, that is nice. And let's start moving everyone forward now. I don't want to be in good range of the archers so that they can do bonus damage against me, but I do want to get into this base. Alright, let's see how this goes. Ah, perfect. The wall is down. Excellent. We'll go for Magic Arrow again just to weaken those archers a little bit more before they inevitably attack us. And vampires... I will wait for now, see if they come any closer. Same with these. Two zombies dead from the archers, that's kind of painful, but I think I'll take that. 15 whites. Can 15 whites beat 48 pikemen? Probably not, actually, looking at this. Pikemen are so good. Like, 10 health on a level 1 unit. Compare that to the skeleton's 6 health. I mean, that's a, that's a strong unit. Just need to find the right time to take them on. Alright, Magic Arrow does get through this time, kills one vampire. Could be worse. And we'll wait with this, and wait with these. Vampires get their health back, that's excellent. Alright, let's go in. My pikemen are going forward, not yet in range of my zombies, annoyingly. Hmm, can they all reach me? I can get out of the range of the swordsmen, but the swordsmen are going to go for the skeletons, I can see that. Swordsmen are going to take out these skeletons. And they are faster than me, I believe. Six speed compared to five speed. Yeah, they are faster than me. Might not be possible for me to protect these skeletons. I think these guys have already... Yeah, these guys have already acted. Uh, how fast are these? Six speed compared to six speed. I'm not sure which of those two will go first. I'm going to move the zombies. They're already in range of the griffins. You know what? It doesn't really make a difference how we do this, I'm pretty sure, because either the zombies are going to get hit by the swordsmen, or the skeletons are. Um, pikemen, that's... ah. <laughs> so either the skeletons are going to get hit by the pikemen, or the zombies are once again. Alright, just going to move these forward, I think. The whites, this is an interesting one. I want to be out of the range of the pikemen, because they can do some damage to me. But at the same time... They're already going to be attacking someone, so maybe I just want to move everyone forward and do what I can. Vampires can get a free hit on the pikemen, which is really nice. I'm going to go straight in for that. Took out seven. That's not actually that great. Go for Magic Arrow again. Oh, the griffins. Ouch. That did a lot. Okay. That was painful. Um, this might have been a mistake. Go hit the swordsman. The swordsman hit me. I think that's their turn spent. Uh, how much are these going to do? 50 to 75 damage. It's enough to take out five pikemen, potentially six. Griffins. Going to take the hit well. I think what I'll probably do. Griffins can retaliate twice, so I, I'm pretty sure I don't want to attack them. I might actually wait. If these guys have all gone now... Get, oh no, the, the pikemen have not actually gone yet. So I think I will actually attack the pikemen for that reason. Take out about ten of them, that's okay. One vampire dies to the archers. Um, are these the same turn? They've gone after the zombies. Yeah, this is the same turn. So I can go for the pikemen. And I shouldn't be retaliated against. Perfect. Pikemen go for the vampires. They're really... Ah, horrible morale. They're really taking out my vampires here. But it's going okay. Move everyone forward. Right, zombies get 12 points of health back. Four whites die for two griffins. That's not good at all. These guys have 22 health left. I can potentially kill one if I'm lucky, but no, I'm not. They take out nine skeletons in one hit. That's really painful. 
I'm not sure if I can win this. I mean, swordsmen are strong units. I do 45 to 67 damage, which is enough to kill one. And they still have 18 archers left as well. Who are really weak up close, but... I mean, there's not, the, the vampires aren't going to survive much longer. I do have the first aid tent, which is artificially making me a little bit better. Zombies will kill five pikemen. At least. We'll do loads of damage to the archers, but the archers aren't too threatening. I think I will actually attack the pikemen, try and clean them out. Yeah, see, the archers aren't doing too much damage because it's close range, that's okay. Let's keep hitting the pikemen. Still got magic arrows left, that sucks. Um, these guys can just go hit these since no retaliation, so that's nice. Bring everyone in. Try and absorb some hits. Ooh, resistance activates again. Perfect, that's nice. Um, but these griffins are potentially going to cost me pretty dearly. Can take out one swordsman. The obvious thing to do with these, I think. They take out one vampire. What I might actually do with the zombies is possibly wait until one of these skeletons has absorbed the hit from the swordsman and then hit them and not have to worry about the retaliation. But the problem with doing that is that the griffins... Oh, they've already acted, I'm pretty sure. I can't remember what they did. Oh yeah, they attacked the whites. So yeah, definitely the best course of action is to wait with these. Uh, three health left on the final vampire. That's okay, I don't mind that. Uh, the whites... I think I will attack the pikemen. Or it might actually be better to attack the archers at this point. I think the pikemen, actually. That's fine. Vampire's dead. Skeleton, time to absorb the hit. Okay, I think that's okay. These guys will tell them to wait for now. Decide what to do with them later. They go straight away. Um... Well, they do have a free turn. I mean, there's no chance of being retaliated against by these swordsmen, so we'll just smack them, get a little bit more damage off, and then hit the swordsmen with the zombies, which takes out two more of them, which is nice. Resistance activates once again, that's awesome. But these griffins are really hurting us. I don't know... I don't think 22 zombies alone can take out all of these swordsmen and all that other stuff as well. I'm gonna wait for one turn. Ah, they take out... yeah, that makes sense. They take out the skeleton so that they can't absorb the hit from the swordsman there. I'm pretty sure... How much spell points? You have no spell points left. I'm pretty sure 22 zombies won't beat 14 griffins, particularly with the help of the swordsman. 39 to 59, so they'll only kill one swordsman. Gonna have to try it. Okay, so it's gonna do 17 damage. This is what's gonna hurt. Oh, disease. Okay. So that lowers their attack and their defense. I've, I figured out what that does now. It lowers their attack and their defense, so they're a little bit weaker. 30 to 45 damage. That's one more swordsman guaranteed to be killed. Let's do it. Zombies get 12 points of uh, 12 of their hit points left. Uh, 12 hit points back is what I mean to say. All right, so now we can guarantee kill the uh, guaranteed kill the swordsman off, and then it's just a question of can 13 zombies be beat 11 archers and 11 griffins with the help of the first aid tent. All right, so he's dead. That's good. Nine points back. I'm not sure how much I lost. Ooh. Oh no. Oh, that that could have cost us. That morale right there. That might have been what this guy needed to win this fight. Yeah, that hurts. I think I can survive one more round. No. Okay, so I've lost the fight. This is... This is painful because it wasn't a terrible loss. So I don't want to reload. It's not potentially that 
problematic. Just really considering my options now. I'm gonna have to spend 2,500 gold to get Straker back. I can't really afford. Um, let's try it one more turn. To do something. Oh wow, that was way too close. I shouldn't have even taken that risk, but... Gave us a chance to kill one or two more archers, and we're going to have to retreat unless surrendering is... Nah, that's not worth it for one zombie. Damn. See, Castle is such a strong faction in terms of their individual units. They do really well. And the main, the main reason Necropolis is considered the stronger of the two factions is just because they can gather up such a large number of skeletons. I'm gonna go for this. Claim a little bit of wood off them which I'll sell in an attempt to get some money back for Straker. And in my turn as, uh, yep, Sanya is chasing me down with a decent sized army. Actually not that good. I think if I get into my base, or get behind my base with Isra, I need to somehow make 2,500 gold. This could be really awkward, actually. I'm gonna have to sell everything. Yeah, I have to sell literally everything, I'm pretty sure. And then we will get... Oh, Tamika's come back as well, that's nice. Uh, she's got a nice army as well, but um, 2,500 gold. Should I actually buy her before I buy Straker? The problem with buying her is I, uh, I need to have another 2,500 gold after that in order to buy Straker. So let's see, 200 gold, so that would be 400, 600, and then 850 gold, so that would take us up to... The 3,600-ish. Then one more turn after that would take us up to 4,500. Which would take us to day 6. And then on day 7 we could rebuy Straker. But it's such a risk. But if I buy him back, I have to also buy him an army. And all I can buy is 4 whites and 17 skeletons, which need to be able to defend against several archers, several griffins, a few swordsmen, and she will get all her spell points back as well from the magic well, that's another thing I need to worry about. Oh man. At least Straker has resistance. Which could help. But I can't see how 17 skeletons and 4 whites would be able to hold that off. Mainly because she would have magic arrow. But I will have the arrow tower to defend me if she wants to go for a full on base attack. Tough choice. Strake has got much better stats as well, that's another thing to consider. Comes with one zombie. Thirty skeletons and four zombies, how much is that really worth? I think that is actually going to be decent. I think that is probably the best option, just going with that. And I don't really want to be spending anything else, but I, I do think that more skeletons could be important. Con considering keeping them all split up so that they don't all get beaten down by magic error and stuff like that, but no, I think we will have one big stack. And we will attempt to defend with that. turn. She's coming. We do get another turn to potentially buy things, but we could lose Straker if we don't save up the money for him very, very, very soon, which would be like next turn. Let's see, let's trade literally everything. This is not the way you're supposed to play, for the record. <laughs> this, is a, this is a really bad situation, trading away literally everything I have. Okay, so we should have 
1,400, no, 400 spare to spend on units, and still make it to 2,500 next turn. So let's see, how many can I buy for 400? 400, seven, seven more skeletons. I'm not feeling super confident. I'm going to be depending on my base defenses, I'm pretty sure. Ah, she doesn't have any spells? Actually, she does. She has... Yeah, she has Magic Arrow. She should have Magic Arrow. Because that I'm pretty sure that's in our Mage's Guild. Combat spells, that's the one. Yeah, Magic Arrow, okay. This could go wrong so easily, but we're going to try it. End turn. She's not going for it. Oh. Okay. Excellent. Alright, that means we can get Straker back. Have a stronger hero to defend with. I think they assessed that they weren't quite strong enough to win the fight. But now they're kind of stuck in my lands. And I get a refreshed batch of units next turn. And I don't think she can actually run far enough away, so I might have caught her out here. We'll have to see. I might be able to buy myself one more skeleton, and I literally will do that. I will take every little bit of extra gold that I can scrape together to maximize my chances of pulling this off. Two more skeletons, that's nice. Okay. 45 gold. Keep Isra at the back here, try and keep him safe. And we'll see what Sanya does. I'm pretty sure I can't beat her if I try to chase her down. Potentially next turn, though. Let's have a look. She's... Oh my god, she's actually going for him. She's going... She's chasing down Isra. Could waste her time with that. Uh, Mafala. No, I can't afford these. Well, I do have 1,000 gold to spend. There's enough for only two vampires. Eight zombies, that's not enough. I might have to keep Isra. Use Isra as bait, sacrifice him, in order to keep Sanya over here and stop her from going back to Transom. I could actually probably run for Transom and take Transom. Actually, I probably couldn't because they'd buy some units, but if it wasn't the start of a new week, I could actually run down to Transom and steal it off her because it's undefended. But uh, I would lose uh, Kesak Kesak Kesakiun, my main base. I would lose my main base if I did that, so I'm not going to do it. I do want to keep her in the back somewhere, um, waste her movement points, keep her moving around a lot. Let's see what can this guy do? Has he got? He has got magic arrow. Pretty sure. Yes, he does have magic arrow, so he will be able to potentially do a small amount of damage before he dies. Especially if I give him. A couple more skeletons. Split that again. And then run Isra up towards there. Buy myself some kind of units. I'm pretty sure that the whites weren't cost effective last time I bought them. I found them to be pretty weak. They have less than twice the hit points of uh, a pikeman. So they're kind of weak. Vampires I can only get two, but I can also get potentially zombies after that as well. I think I will get, yeah, I will get vampires actually, I, I just like vampires a lot. They are very good units, and I will also get, can I get more of these? I can get three zombies, three, uh, three walking dead, four walking dead in total. And uh, actually, Tamika, Tamika could maybe make a run to the base, which won't work, but this guy's going to have to spend. He's going to have to buy himself another hero, or buy himself defenders. Probably he will buy another hero. He's going to have to do something like that. And uh, we, we were stuck in stalemate for yet another turn. Sanya still is not able to leave. I'm pretty sure if this carries on, we will be able to beat her. Several, several, few, few. Yeah, I should be able to win that fight. I really should. There's some griffins there defending, but that's it. And steal that. And run down. Try and grab the Redwood Observatory. 
Yeah, I should be able to win that fight, I would think. But I actually... my army is so small. How many more vampires? Two more vampires. Four vampires in total. And two skeletons. Actually, wait, let's trade once again. Everything we have. 255. That's enough for one more zombie. I think. Yeah, one more zombie. Or one more white. Oh, two more zombies. Okay, two more zombies. That's ten zombies, lots of skeletons, uh, a few vampires, and uh, just a few random stacks of lone skeletons. I'm pretty sure Sanya still... still can't get away from me in the space of one turn, so I think I should have until next turn to buy a few more units as well. I really think we might have her trapped. I'm hoping. Particularly if I send this guy back around to here. Let her chase him down. Oops, didn't mean to do that. And I'm pretty sure he'll recruit another hero next turn, I think, but we'll see. Uh, she is... She is still just hanging around the base. I really think... that we should be able to punish her for this. And he hasn't recruited another hero yet. I think he doesn't have any way of getting resources. Possibly he's about as poor as I am. Blue. Blue is here. <laughs> okay, so we're like right in the vicinity of two other players. If we go west, that will lead to Blue's base, so we don't want to be doing that. And down here, on the other hand, lots of good rewards. Pandora's box is really nice. Uh, and him cash there. Won't actually be able to take any of that stuff on for quite a while, but it does look like... If I want to go somewhere where I won't have to worry too much about being attacked by other players, that's probably the best option. Anyway, let's go back to here. Create those two vin final vampires. Uh, two more zombies. And let's sell all of this. Alright, so we have 135 gold, which is enough for one more zombie. And I think I want to go for this. I think I actually do. That really should be beatable. Here we go. Oh, he's got a ballista. Fuck. Okay. So a ballista is better than a first aid tent, as far as the battle of the, uh... <laughs> the battle of the war machines go. Magic arrow, how much will that do? 40 points of damage. Is that enough to kill this? Yes it is. Let's do it. I hate these things. How much of these will it kill? 25 health. Kill one and a half griffins. 40 damage, it would kill half the archers as well, which would actually probably be the best option. And we'll wait. Okay, so resistance doesn't activate that turn, unfortunately. Let's see what this guy wants to do. Archers do 5 damage, not even enough to- <laughs> The archers and the ballista didn't do enough to kill one skeleton. Uh, well, thanks to the first aid tent, I guess, but... Okay, so I didn't need to worry about the ballista, that's doing absolutely terrible damage. Um, I'm pretty sure we can win this. Just gonna defend. Move these guys up to defend the skeletons. And these guys, I think, can go to there, which should give them a good kind of vantage point to attack everyone from. Vampires. How fast are they? 6 versus 7. Ah, because I'm on my native terrain as well, it means I get to go first next turn. How much damage can I do? I can't see, just from looking. 5 to 8 damage each, that'd be 6 of them. Uh, I think I want to hit the griffins, just because they have double retaliation, and I want to be able to hit them without being retaliated against, so the vampires are really my only option. So I'm going to move up to there. Next turn I go first. I'll hit the griffins in such a way that I think I should also be able to hit the archers next turn. And I can also actually... Actually, I can wipe them out with magic arrow. Which I will do. And hit the griffins. Take two of them out for three, which is nice. Five skeletons lost to that. 
All zombies hit them with disease, that's perfect. Uh, 20 health left, they will do 27 to 41 damage, which is enough to take out one griffin. Yep, we'll take that. Swordsman dead. Didn't manage to do anything too worrisome. Um, should I try and keep my skeleton? No, I'm going to bring my skeletons into the fight. Uh, I'm going to not bother attacking these because they do have one more chance to retaliate, so I'd rather just weaken them. I'm pretty sure he should flee now. See, I think I think we're now winning against the Tam player, but but it's come at a real cost. That's the issue. I think we can beat Tan, but we might not be able to beat the other players because while we've been screwing around doing this cat and mouse thing, they will have all been building up, probably without having to worry about any competition. However, if I do manage to take Tan's base, that could be huge. I might not be ready to do it yet though, I mean I really don't have much of an army here. So it's not over yet, we still have to do a lot more cat and mouse. Griffins. That's the obvious thing to hit, so we'll go for that. How far can these guys move? How much health do these have? 30 health. Yeah, so I shouldn't lose a vampire. Even if he does go and attack them. Yeah, he's fled. Okay, so Sanya's still alive, unfortunately. But he's going to have to spend 2,500 gold to get her back. Uh, Isra can go and reclaim the ore pit. And then do I want to send Straker to try and take out Transom? I probably don't. It depends. It depends, because I'm, I'm working on the assumption here that Tan is really poor. So if they spend 2,500 gold to get Sanya back, then in theory they might not be able to do anything else. So she might have a terrible army. But if they spend the money, if they somehow have more money than I think they do, then they can spend it on Sanya and give her a second army. And my army is extremely weak, so I might not be able to win. So, difficult. I will irritate him by uh, taking his ore pit. <laughs> and uh, I'll just leave Tamika around here for a while. Isra can... I still got the sawmill actually, they didn't go for the sawmill. Didn't reclaim that. Isra's not really got too much useful stuff to be doing, but I guess I'll send him down there. And Straker... I will send Straker in the direction of Tan's base. What I'll probably actually do with Isra is pass some units onto him, pass them to... Straker. Only going to be 1,000 golds worth of units though, which is kind of weak. Let's see what he does. He has brought Sanya back, I'm pretty sure. Three swordsmen, seven griffins. Uh, magic arrow, how much will this do? Let's have a look. 30 points of damage, I think that might... Oh, it's not quite enough to take out a swordsman, but it will take out one griffin. I can't say whether I think this hero was a bit of a waste of money or not, but, um... She's gone. She's... Oh, they lost nothing, what? I thought I killed one. Oh, never mind, okay. Uh, Straker, how far can you go? Not quite far enough. Not quite far enough, again, that's the issue. I could go for a second risky base attack. But then sh they will have a thousand gold of their own to spend on units now, which is difficult. This time I'm buying skeletons instead of whites. And let's pass them over. Alright, so 31 skeletons, 11 zombies. They will have their full batch of 30 spell points back as well, which is a problem. I only have one spell point left, which I should be able to refill now by going for the well. Alright, got my spell points back. Uh, they got more pikemen in their base as well. Okay, so this isn't over. I, d I honestly don't think I can take a base attack on them right now. What I might actually have to do is what I meant to do a long time ago and just try and save up. Buy myself Town Hall and then actually be able to buy some, some more units to build up my base with. Once again, this is going to be giving the other players more of an advantage, but I think it's what I want to do. Oh! Oh! Well, see, that was... <laughs> that was something I didn't consider. There's another player that I need to worry about. Uh, Tyrus has taken my skeletons from my base, um, has come in with his own army, and is claiming all my stuff, really? <laughs> uh... Alright, I'm gonna have to play really defensive. That's the only thing I can do. I actually didn't get my 1,000 gold. 
because my base got stolen off me by a different player. So good thing I never went through there or the exact same thing would have happened that happened against Tan. <sighs> this is a nightmare. Lots of archers, lots of pikemen, a few skeletons, several swordsmen and several griffins. Can I even defend against that? Sell everything. Buy ourselves a few more tanky units. Um, got nothing tanky left to buy. I think whites, because they do get their health back every turn. We'll get one of those. Isra might have to be sacrificed. Can't see how I'm going to keep him alive. For now, I'll just leave him kind of in between the two. And end my turn. What the hell? This guy has two massive armies, really? Alright, so Isra is being sacrificed. Uh, let's take out some archers. Let's keep everyone away. Ooh, might I be able to... Oh no, I thought I might be able to fire off a second magic arrow. Unfortunately not. Uh, green is not attacking me. This is not a good use of my money. But these two armies combined could definitely take me out. Tan, meanwhile, gets to rebuild peacefully and happily because if I, for some reason, was dropped right in the middle of the map, surrounded by enemies. Nightmare. Absolute nightmare. Um, do I want to build army? Yeah, I, I, need, I need more army, definitely. I just gotta hope they, they leave. Okay, green is now going for tan. Perfect, alright. So, by putting up just enough of a defense that they didn't want to go for the attack on me, they are now heading in the direction of tan's base. Hopefully they'll wipe each other out and I'll be able to claim the spoils. Hopefully. But it's, it's looking very much like I'm one of the weaker players on the map right now. I'm gonna keep trying to save up for this town hall. Green is... nope. No, he's not going for it. He sent someone back. Oh, it's now blocked by lots of serpent flies, because it's the month of the serpent flies. There's been some serpent flies who have spawned. <laughs> and they're actually... I think they're actually blocking off the monolith two-way, and they're also blocking off the way back to Tan. So green would have to kill lots of serpent flies to get through there. And also to get through there, so potentially these serpent flies are actually going to help me out quite a lot. Uh, I'll claim this orpit back. Hopefully, I can make it back to base, which I can't. Oh, this could be bad. This could be really bad. And he can see it as well. I shouldn't have done that. I might have to load the auto save. We'll see. No. Okay, he's not come back. Can't get through the serpent flies, I guess. That was a real risk. I shouldn't have done that. I left my base undefended. He could have come back through that portal and taken my base off me if he was a little bit more intelligent. So that was not the right thing to do. But I seem to have got away with it for now. The issue here is that when he comes through the monolith two-way, I won't have any warning. So potentially I should be buying some more units right now rather than saving up for the Town Hall. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to save my game and try and save up for the Town Hall. Green is not... oh, there he goes. Okay. So now we know that was probably not the right choice. Uh, they've already got a way through. We don't want to attack. I will go for the griffins first. And I'll wait. Everyone can wait. Skeletons aren't going to make it through the moat. They'll die. Um, Pikemen, I'm pretty sure, can get through there. Let's try and block this way through with our skeletons. Okay. 
No, the only thing I can do is try and keep them away from my base by blocking them, leaving them on the moat every turn. So they take extra damage. But then there's all those archers there who get free hits on me. And this keep is only going to uh, only going to survive for so long. The main building has an attack skill of 10 and does 28 to 42 damage. It's not bad. Uh, let's actually hit these archers. So I don't like them. And these guys can wait. That leads to them getting hit by the griffins, but I might actually be able to surround and take out the griffins. One griffin perishes. Shouldn't have done that, actually. That That's an, an unnecessary retaliation to be taking. But I do get to hit them for free with the skeletons, which is nice. Um, should I move this guy up to try and block these pikemen? I think I will. This guy can... Just hit the griffin for now. You can defend. Really taking out my vampires. It's cleared a way through. Vampires get to go again, so we hit the griffins once again, as he's now clearing a way through for his other units to come through the broken wall. To keep hitting these griffins. Try and stop them from getting through the moat. Wait with these. These are my bigger batch of skeletons, so I'll wait with those as well. Hit them with this skeleton, absorb the retaliation. Um, am I going to take another retaliation? Potentially I am. No, I'm not. That was it. I've already He's already spent his two retaliations, so that's good. And I should now be able to hit the griffins for free with those skeletons, which is nice. That works fine. Uh, these guys can now also go, and I think the griffins cannot retaliate against them either. And that's the griffins dead. Perfect. All right, so that's good. Vampires. How many left? Two of them left. Just gonna keep them away for now. These guys can wait. These guys can get away as well. These guys can wait. And these guys are gonna block the way through. Okay, so seven pike and perished from the boneyard, which does 70 damage. Um. 31 skeletons here. I think I'll just defend with them. How many spell points left? None left, so that's good. Uh, zombies. Still doing okay. Then. Okay. Now there's a second way that needs to be blocked, and there's swordsmen to deal with who are going to try and come through it. Um. I think once you've taken damage from the Boneyard, you don't take it again the next turn. I think. I'm gonna move these guys through to here. Block that. These guys could actually go out and kill the Skeletons. That's not... <laughs> skeletons kind of irrelevant here, they're not gonna be doing anything too bad. Wait. Wait. Defend. Ah, they do actually take extra damage for every turn that they stay spending in there. They do take 70 extra damage, so blocking the walls is actually the perfect way to win this. Just need to take those archers out. I should be relatively okay. Ah, uh, that was a lot of damage to take there, but... It's okay. Keep hitting them. Um, these guys, six, seven, so they're faster than the swordsmen. They can potentially, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They can potentially get through to the archers. Start of next turn. Let's go for that. Zombies. Who's going to go first? The white should go before the swordsmen. So we'll get the whites back to safety. Swordsmen are going for the vampires. Skeletons I'm pretty tempted to just defend with them. Or potentially to walk away from them. I have one more speed than them. But at the same time I have a massive incentive to try and keep them here. So that they keep taking damage from the boneyard. How much damage will I do? 26 to 70. Yeah, let's, let's just go for it. Let's attack them. As they're still alive for one more turn, these guys can defend. 
one swordsman goes down to the arrow tower. I'm gonna fucking these guys walk. They can actually catch my vampires out now. But I don't think there's any way I can escape them. So I might as well just attack the archers. And these guys can defend. Whites, I can't see them doing much. Because they're pretty frail. Maybe they can get behind the skeletons. Oh, they actually couldn't reach my vampires, that's nice, okay. But they will be able to reach them next turn. Uh, this time I'm defending with them. One more swordsman goes down. Ah, but the... the catapult is starting to attack my gate now. I mean, once the gate goes down, that means the moat long, no longer functions, so they will actually... be able to walk into my base for free. Mark these walk. Potentially far enough to hit me. 10 to 16 damage, so I won't be able to kill one. I think I'm going to try to get away. But I don't think I can. Uh, I can go and hit these... 31 to 46 damage. Um, I think I'll just park them there. So they're forced to waste a turn. As so yeah, they do get to hit my vampires, but I should be able to escape them next turn. The pikemen go down. Ah, it's the three swordsmen I'm going to have to kill the normal way, because the gate has now gone down, they can now get into the base. But I should be okay to do that with 12 zombies and 4 whites against 3 swordsmen. Should be pretty doable. Particularly if this arrow tower survives one more turn. Take out one more of these. Let's wait. Okay, he goes for the zombies, he takes out one zombie, gets diseased, the zombies get their health back. 24 health, 11 to 19 damage, that's not enough for my liking, so I'm getting out of there. Arrow tower takes out one more of them, still alive for now. These guys don't have to worry about retaliation, and these guys can finish them off. And Tyrus is gone. Alright, so that fight went well. The problem is I don't want to be fighting anyone right now. <laughs> I should get a few skeletons back, but not many. Speculum. Basic earth magic, that's, that's a really good skill, actually. We will take that. I think that should reduce the cost of magic arrow to four, I believe. Knowledge plus one that literally doubles our spell points, that's great. We will take necromancy. Okay, so we've gone up two levels, that's really good, and uh, it's it seems that they're able to get through the monolith without having to fight, but I'm not. Uh, green is a long way away. I would love to scout and see what's on the other side of the monolith. But uh, I, I do think that was probably Green's main army, because it's only... it's oh, Well, it is the second month, I suppose. I could potentially stay put for one more turn. Just so I can buy that town hall. I will save the game again. And I think... What I will do is next turn I'll buy myself the Town Hall. Once I've got the Town Hall I should be able to start actually buying these creatures properly, as well as potentially looking to increase what I have available to me in my base. Tan is crippled, badly crippled, can't leave her at uh, his base, her base, whatever you want to say. Um, Green has lost, I'm pretty sure Green just lost his main army. And his other army is a long way from me. He might have a third army through the monolith, but that seems very unlikely. At this stage of the game, that seems very unlikely. So I think what I'm going to do is stay put by the town hall and start building up. I am going to have to keep playing defensively and just hope that these guys keep throwing their units away. <laughs> um, Blue could be getting ahead of everyone right now, for all I know, and uh, there's at least one more player as well on top of that, so whoever that is, they're doing well too. Let's have a look. Oh no, that's it. Okay. So my assumption... Oh, Tyrus was the... Is that Tyrus down there? No, it's Christian. So Tyrus was actually his main hero, and he's just lost that. Or he's just given up. I think he lost the hero entirely. So Green must be crippled. We know Tan is crippled. The question is, are we falling behind Blue because of all these shenanigans we've been caught up in? I've never played a game quite like this where I'm under so much threat that I'm just unable to do anything. <laughs> I did try to make a play against Tan there and take his base, but it didn't work. I think it could have worked if we just pushed it a little bit later, but um, 
difficult to deal with the presence of green. Uh, he kind of came out of nowhere. I honestly thought the game might be lost at that point, but he managed to just about cling on. And uh, potentially, in the next episode, we can start actually building up and making a comeback. Hopefully these two will duke it out, and one of them will die. I would actually, I'm actually probably rooting for Tan here, because if Green manages to take that base, then we're in some real trouble, because Green gets to come at us with two armies. So I'm actually rooting for Tan, and I would think that Tan probably could win, because they have a, they have a base now, you can see that they have a moat on the icon there, so they now have a moat. So they can defend their base in the same way I just defended my own. This guy's army is not that big, so Tan should be able to fight him eventually. So that could, that should kill Christian as well, and Green should be crippled for a long time. Um, and then potentially I can go and fight Green and not worry about Tan. But I think all of that is so far in the future that it's impossible to say for now. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this part, and I will see you next time. And it should be very interesting because I have no idea what's going to happen. This is a very interesting situation. So yeah, see you then, guys.